Here we see the rack frame at the end of the last video with the first two odroids in place with the second frame beside them with its power supply fitted. Also in view is the prototype of the 3D printed fascia for the odroid in the top left hand corner. When I have completed this project each odroid will have such a fascia. A quick look at the first odroid frame showing odroids 1 and 2 mounted above one another with a cooling fan and 180 watt HDPlex power supply mounted behind them. Now we can see the second frame with its HDPlex 200 watt power supply fitted and wired up to the power cables purchased from Odroid. HDPlex no longer make the 180 watt power supply, but the 200 watt version is almost the same size and performs perfectly for our Odroid project. The Odroids come well packaged, and although the board can support two 16 GB sodium memory cards. I've opted for a single DDR4 8GB card in this configuration. If needed, another 8GB card can also be added later. Wrapped in the usual anti-static packaging, the Odroid board needs very little additional hardware to be functional. The processor, which is an Intel Celeron G4114, is already mounted on the motherboard with the large passive heatsink covering most of the top of the board. The memory which I purchased from Odroid is an 8GB DDR4 Corsair module, running at 2100 to 2400 MHz, and is flat mounted against the underside of the motherboard, giving it a very low profile. The SSD, which is also mounted on the underside of the board, I purchased from CCL Online, and is a Transcend 128GB M2 PCIe Generation 3 times 4 NVMe card. While the memory cards slip into place remarkably easily, removal of the small screw that retains the M2 SSD can occasionally be challenging. However, with a little care and some effort, this screw can be removed and your SSD fitted. The only other addition to the board is the battery backup for the real time clock. While it would have been nice to have this fitted on the motherboard, it's understandable that it's not, as it's a very crowded motherboard. With a little dab of hot glue, I'll secure the battery to the side of the audio input and output, which keeps it out of the way. Now that the underside of the board is fully populated, you can really appreciate just how low profile the whole unit is. Fitting of the backup battery takes but a moment by slotting the cable into the small connector on the motherboard. Now that the Odroid board is fully assembled, it's time to fit it to the frame. We fitted the power supply in the previous video and have wired it up to the power cables purchased from Odroid. That they can supply these cables with moulded plugs gives you a lot of flexibility in which power supply to use. Odroid also sell an external power supply should you wish to go down that route. Since the frame to hold the two Odroids is made out of maker beam parts, it does allow a lot of flexibility when it comes to mounting computer boards, and can be adjusted by a millimetre here or there to allow the frame to fit the computer being fitted. You can see that the Odroid Supply cooling fan is in fact mounted at the back of the frame to almost silently move air through the frame to cool the Odroids. It's an active fan connected to the lower Odroid and does use a miniature connector to the motherboard. I'm really impressed with the quality of this fan. It runs almost silently and only powers up when it needs to. There we have the first Odroid fitted, so now it's time to look to adding the second. The last thing to do on the first Odroid is to connect the cooling fan to the miniature socket on the motherboard. I'll speed through the fitting of the second Odroid as the steps to fit everything to it are exactly the same as the first.
The second Odroid is being fitted with exactly the same components as the first. 128GB SSD and 8GB of DDR4 RAM. As there are two memory slots on the underside of the Odroid, we could add an additional 8GB of DDR4 RAM at a later date, should we feel the need to do so. Mounted directly above the first Odroid, with enough clearance to ensure good airflow, the second Odroid slips into place. I have already tested the connections and voltages from the power supply to ensure I hadn't reversed any of the cables. After adjusting these standoffs to their correct position, the second Odroid can be secured into place. The final touch is to connect the power cable and the unit is complete. Now we can see both frames side by side. I just have to install Windows 10 Pro on each Odroid and they will be ready for use. Now that they are installed in the rack, we just have to power them up. This will be the penultimate video in this series, with only a few finishing touches needed for the completion of the project. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this project, but that's it for today. Thank you for watching.